Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 25. We are on page number 114. On page 114 you will see some practice problems dealing with the concept of ratios and proportions. Ratios and proportions. Here's, here's the first problem. We are told that Maria we are told that Maria spends 27 hours we are told that she spends 27 hours in a 3 week period. She spends 27 hours in a period of 3 weeks practicing her piano. In a, period of, in a period of three weeks. The question simply is, if she continues this practice, how many hours will she spend practicing her piano in a period of seven weeks? Let's see what we can do. We need to set it up as a proportion, and we're dealing with two things. We're dealing with hours and weeks. Hours and weeks. We are told that she spends 27 hours in a three week period. She spends 27 hours in a period of three weeks, in a period of three weeks. The question is at this rate, how many hours will she end up practicing in a period of seven weeks? You just multiply both sides by seven. Let's do it here. I'm going to erase this part so we can see it. Look, if you multiply, if you multiply both sides by seven, and the reason we are multiplying both sides by 7 is because we want to get rid of this 7 on the bottom so that we only have the x. This 7 will drop out now and now we are left with only x on this side and x would have to equal this quantity which is 7 times 27 over 3. 27 goes into 3 9 times. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. It becomes 9. So we end up with 7 times 9. x equals, x equals 7 times 9. 7 times 9, 7 times 10 is 70, so 7 times 9 would be 63. So this is one way of doing it. This is one way of doing it, but there was one very straightforward way here, very simple way. We didn't have to convert changes into a mumbo jumbo thing here. Let's do it in a more straightforward way. Let's do it in a more straightforward way. We went in a very round roundabout way. We went in a very roundabout way. Here's here's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with hours and weeks. We are told that she practices 27 hours in a period of 3 weeks. Right there. Divide top and bottom by 3. If you divide top and bottom by 3, 3 will become 1 and 27 becomes 9. So if you practice 27 hours in 3 weeks, which is same as 9 hours per day, or 9 hours per week. And if she's practicing 9 hours in 1 week, if she's practicing 9 hours in 1 week, then of course in a period of 7 weeks, it will just be 9 times 7, which is 63 hours which is exactly what we found a second ago. Let's do one more, shall we? Problem number two. We are told that the success rate, the success, success rate is two cells out of 11 calls. The question is how many cells are we going to have? How many how many cells are we going to have out of 55 calls? I hope that you have the book in front of you so that you can read the entire problem as it appears verbatim, word for word. But what they're trying to tell us here, what they're telling us in this problem is that we have a salesperson whose job it is to make some phone calls and make some sales. And his success rate or her success rate if you prefer, her success rate is that she makes two sales every time out of every 11 calls. The question is how many sales can we expect to make out of 55 calls? Again, we could set it up in a, in a, in a more formal way like this. You can do it sales 
versus our calls and we know that she makes two cells out of 11 calls the question is if she makes 55 calls how many cells does she make well this is 55 this is 11 we need to scale it up by a factor of 5 multiply top and bottom by 5 let me let me rewrite this so we have more room so it doesn't become so crowded I should have left more room here the question is how many cells will she make if she makes 55 calls 55 is what multiple of 11? It's a multiple of 5. In other words, we need to take this ratio, 2 over 10, and scale it up by a factor of 5. As long as you multiply top and bottom by the same number, it's the same. So 11 times, 50, <coughs> 11 times 5 is 55, which means that she must make 10 cells. Not she must, she is likely to make 10 cells out of 55 calls. This is one way. All the ways to just to look at the bloody thing. Just look at it here. This is 11, this is 55. So if she makes this many cells out of 11 calls and she's making 55 calls, that's 5 times as many. Since she's making 5 times as many calls, she's going to make 5 times as many cells. She's going to make 10 cells right here, 2 times 5. Let's do, one. Let's do, let's do the next one. Number, number 3. In number three, we are told that we are running a factory where we make some whatever it is that we are making. And we are told that we, we, are, we have four defective units out of every 1000 produced. Because no factory, no machinery is going to give you 100% accurate output. There is always some some defective items, defective uh, units. It just varies from factory to factory, machine to machine, as so to how, how good of a job this it does. And in this particular factory, from experience, from the past experience, we know that every time we make a thousand units, usually we get four of them defective. The question is this. The question is, how many defective can be expected to have I'm not writing anything down how many defective how many defective units can be expected to have out of 95,000 units well let's set, let's set it up defective units out of a total production you can expect to have you can expect to have four defective units out of 1,000 units. And the same proportion is continued. The question is how many defects you can be expected to have if instead of 1,000 you are producing 95,000. Bring the 95,000 to top here so the x will become 4 times 95,000 over 1,000. As you can see, 1000 is going to drop out and it's 4 times 95. Of course it's 4 times 95. Of course it's 4 times bloody 95. Because if you're expecting 4 defective out of 1000 and if instead of 1000 if you're producing 95,000 instead of 1000 if you're producing 95,000, 95 times that amount then you should expect 95 times that amount of defective. 4 times 95, right there. We didn't have to do all this mumbo jumbo. We just have to figure out what is 4 times 95. Let's figure out 4 times 95 here. Okay, pay attention. 4 times 95 is what we're interested in. And if you walk up to me and simply ask me what is 4 times 95, my answer would be how the bloody hell do I know 4 times 95? I have no idea. But I do know what is 4 times 100. That I can do in my head. I'm very bright. If you come up to me and wake me up in the middle of my sleep and ask me what is 4 times 100, I will tell you it's 400. That I can do. We're not interested in finding out what is 4 times 100. I want to find out what is 4 times 95 is. Well, I don't know what 4 times 95 is, but I know what is 4 times 5 is. 4 times 5 is 20. 
if you subtract 4 times 5, that's a 20. Since you're subtracting 5 4s out of 100 4s, what we are left with must be 95 4s, which is three, 380. Do you understand? And all of this again, we didn't have to write it out on the blackboard. You just have to think. We have to think logically. You have to think straight in a straightforward manner. 95 times 4 is what we want to find out. I don't know what 95 times 4 is, but 100 times 4 is 400. You take away 5 4s from it, so that it will have 95 4s. Not 100 4s, but 95 4s. 5 4s are 20. You take away 20 from 400, you're left with 380. Let's do the next one. Number 4. In number four, we are told that we have a map where we are told that we are dealing with one centimeter versus miles. This time I'm not going to write everything down, I'm just going to read it to you. We are told that we have a map on which we see a legend which tells us that in this, in this particular map, the distance of one centimeter represents 75 miles. That's the scale. The scale is one centimeter represents the actual distance of 75 miles. The question is, how far apart are two cities? How far apart are two cities that are represented on this map as being as being 8.6 centimeters apart? How far are they? And here are the answer choices: 8.7 miles, 66.4 miles, 82.6 miles, or 645 miles. The reason I'm writing down all the answer choices is because you will see in a second that Sometimes some questions require some nasty calculations and when when the question requires nasty calculation you should stop yourself in tracks right away and immediately look at the answer choices because whenever you have to do nasty calculations on this exam in reality you don't actually have to do it because the answers that they give us answer that they give us in questions like this are so ridiculous that the right answers should just jump at you the right answer should just jump at you without doing any calculation at all Let's see what this one says. So we are interested in finding out x. If you cross multiply, bring x to this side. 1 times x is x. 1 times x is just x. And 75 times 5, 75 times 8.6. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look at it. We are trying to figure out, let's forget about 8.6. Even if we just said 75 times 8. Even if you had 75 times 8, let alone 75 times 8.6, even if we had 75 times 8, we already know that if you take twice of 75, 75 times 2 is 150. If you double, if you double 75, it becomes 150. 75 times 2, in other words, is 150. How the bloody hell 75 times 8 can be only 8.7? 75 times 2 is 150. How can, how can 75 times 8 be only 66? It's less than 75. How can 75 times 8 be only 82 when we know 75 times 2 is 150? The answer is 645. Answer is 645. On the way, on the way we could have done it, which is a little bit more complicated and it's not necessary here, but here's the other way. We have to figure out what is 75 times 8.6 is. We can approximate this. Approximate that as 75 times 9. Again, you wake me up in the middle of the night and ask me what is 75 times 9, and my answer would be bloody hell. How the hell do I know? I do know what 75 times 10 is. 75 times 10 is 750. But we're not looking for 1075, we're looking for 975. So take 175 away. If you take away 175, we're left with 675. Five. I'm drawing a blank. Seventy-five. If we take it away, it's going to be six twenty-five. The answer is somewhere close to six twenty-five. The answer, whatever the answer is, is close to six twenty-five. Is it, does eight qualify as being close to six twenty-five? No, nobody in the right bloody mind will tell you that eight is approximately six hundred twenty-five. The sixty-six qualify as being close to six twenty-five? No, neither is eighty-two. 600, 645 
is what we're looking for. And the reason why it's 645 is because we're taking away 945. In reality, it's 8.6. So if 645 is the answer, it cannot be, the correct answer cannot be 8 or 66 or 82. That was the end of it. We'll meet again tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll deal with concept of what is known as two, two variables that are that are directly proportional. What does it we just deal with the ratio and proportion? To, tomorrow we'll deal with the concept known as directly proportional. On day number 26. What does it mean for two variables to be directly proportional? That's what we're going to learn tomorrow and I'll see you then, okay? Bye now.